Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we are here um, up at the entrance to the nursery to our house, what we call just the gate bed because there's a gate right there. We are going to do some early spring maintenance. The main thing that I want to take care of today are these ginormous sunshine ligustrums that are at our mailbox. They did not get pruned last year, just life happened and they didn't get pruned. Clearly they are massive and huge and need to be pruned. Now I'm going to probably give some of you a heart attack because I am going to prune them very severely. So I will show you exactly how to do that. Also, I believe you can see, um, maybe, back here at the gate, we've got three perennial grasses. It is definitely time to prune back your perennial grasses if you have not done that. I will show you how to do that. And then finally over here with the main bed, we're gonna go up there, go in there and do a little bit of cleanup and we are going to go ahead and fertilize. I have got all my fertilizers ready and we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to fertilize your shrubs and your perennials in late winter, early spring and explain to you which fertilizer is best for which plant. So we have got a lot to work to do. So without further ado, we are gonna grab the hedge trimmers and we are going to get started on these sunshine ligustrums. Okay, so you can see behind me here at our mailbox, we have five of the sunshine ligustrums. We love this plant and really it is maintenance free except for one time a year, you need to give them a good prune and you need to fertilize them. Like I told you earlier, we did not prune them last year. Clearly, they are behemoths. Um, these are easily maintained to whatever size that you want. If you were to never prune them, then they get really long and spindly and thin and can get like to six feet tall. We like to keep them much more compact and full because they have that gorgeous, bright chartreuse color and it really just makes a huge pop. Now, I have my electric steel uh, pruners here. This is the AP300. There you go. Jerry got these for me because they're so lightweight. They do a good job and I don't have to sit there and worry about tugging and getting somebody to start. Again, I'm gonna be harsh, okay? Mama of three is coming out of me and I am going to show no mercy and I am going to really prune these because I know that this is what is best for them in the long run. So without further ado, I am just going to really severely prune them. You do not have to be specific. I don't have to worry about going in there and trimming each little limb at a certain spot. Just go for it. If you've had a bad day, you've had a rough day, you're a little, uh, a little uh, frustrated, a little got a little anger pent up, <laughs> go prune your sunshine like customs. I think I can hear some of y'all like shrieking in horror and gasping for breath for what I just did to these sunshine ligustrums. You have to trust me that I know what I'm doing with this plant because we're doing it this time of year instead of the fall because spring is essentially here in North Carolina. These guys are already starting to put on 
some little um, swells where their new growth is getting ready to pop out. So they're getting ready to start their growing period anyway. So this is perfect time to do it, as opposed to if I did it in the fall, then all winter, it would look just like this. Um, they need a good prune, otherwise they're gonna get so tall and leggy and overpower this bed that they're gonna get out of control. This is a great way to keep them under control. They respond really, really well to being pruned, very much like a loripedalum. If you have loripedalums and you're aware of those, this is kind of a, reacts the same way that a loripedalum does to being pruned. I'm going to um, clean up my mess because I have got a huge mess. I'm going to um, go in there because some of the main stems, they're very hard. And with my electric trimmers, it was hard for some of um, those stems to get cut and nice and even. So that's why I have my clippers. I will go in there and kind of prune any of those down. So if, you, if you're using electric pruners like I am, and it just seems like it's a little bit too, um, the stems are too tough, just get your clippers out and clip them up. It's not that big of a deal. We're gonna get all this cleaned up and get some of my weeds out of here, get the rake, get it nice and um, pulled back as far as all this extra debris. And then we're gonna come back and fertilize. So I will see you in just a minute. All right, friends, so I've got all of my mess cleaned up. The Kubota is nice and full of debris, so I will go dump that in a little bit. But first, we're gonna go ahead and fertilize these sunshine ligustrums. You will see that I have, this is like a 50 pound bag of plant tone. Yes, it's upside down. A critter decided it would make a lovely winter's snack, and so they ate on the bottom, which has now become my top. So there you go. Um, Really, I'm just going, I'm not gonna measure. I'm just gonna use my two hands and just throw out a nice, healthy um, dose. Basically following the whole um, shrub line because these are planted so close together, I know that their roots are intermingled. You could, if you wanted to, just go around the base of the plant, right? If you have just a single one or if they are new, obviously you kind of follow the drip line of the plant. The drip line is the edge of the plant and that's kind of where the roots are. But this is going to go out further because they're so intertwined with each other. So I'm just gonna kind of broadcast it pretty um, widely and just let it cover that area. And then after looking at this space, putting the plant tone out, definitely I'm gonna need a fresh layer of mulch on this. So I will take care of that also. A lot of things going on, but it's gonna look so good once I am done with this project.
right, so really easy, really simple to get those sunshine ligustrums fertilized. Now there's a couple of things that I need to do, so we're going to have to go do a little bit of a logistics here. So I've got to go empty the Kubota of all the sunshine ligustrum because it is quite full. Let me show you. Where'd she go? There she is. Uh, yeah, so she is overflowing with sunshine ligustrum debris. We're gonna go dump that. Then I need to get a little scoop to make putting out fertilizer easier because I'm gonna be putting out a lot of fertilizer here. And then I need to get the tractor so that I can get a couple of scoops of mulch, probably throw in a little bit of lunch in there as well. So we're going to uh, take a little break, get those kinds of things done, and then we'll meet you back here in just a second. Let's go. Get it in gear first. Get it together, woman. Driving a tractor, operating the bucket, and uh, not spilling mulch while filming is not as easy as one might think. So uh, I made a mess, so I'll have to clean it up. But we're going to get this mulch put out, and then this section will be done.
right, my friends. So this bed is now complete. Legustrums are trimmed, check. Plant toned, check. Major weeds pulled out, check. Some still remain, it's all right. And then mulch. So all we have to do is just sit back, wait, let the good Lord give them some water with some rain, and there you go. Come about mid-April, I will go ahead and um, plant some annuals up here. I always like to put some flowering annuals right here. So all I'll have to do is just move back the mulch and get them in the ground. I am gonna go get some lunch and then we are gonna tackle those perennial grasses next. Get those bad boys trimmed down to the ground. Next on the list of things to get done is to trim back these three perennial grasses. I get asked a lot what they are because we have some at the nursery also. I don't know. <laughs> That's the short answer. Uh, my mama gave me some of these years and years ago because they did not grow well in her shade garden. Put them in my sun garden and they grew really well. Loved it so much that they sent out the seeds um, and I had babies everywhere. So this is why I don't further investigate what the kind of grass it is because if it's found in the exact prime location, it will send seeds and you will have grasses everywhere. Here, I don't think it gets quite enough sun to be so prolific, so it is contained and there I don't have babies out and about. So what we're gonna do is we are going to do a little trick. Of course, the wind just started blowing, um, which is fun when you're gonna cut perennial grasses because that means the stuff's gonna blow everywhere, but ha, such is life. Bungee cord. You can use a bungee cord, you can use um, a piece of twine, anything that you want to this just helps make it a little bit easier so ladies what we are going to do is we are going to pretend that we're going to put this grass in a ponytail so before we even do our first cut we're going to come um maybe a foot up off the ground and wrap this bungee cord around the grass and so it's going to be a ponytail that way when i cut it it will all still be attached together and i can pick it up at one time and put it in the Kubota and I don't have little grasses blowing everywhere. So that is the plan. So um, let's see how easy or how hard this is going to be. too bad first you just gotta hug it really good all right and then again I've got my hedge trimmers these are great too because using the electric as soon as your hand comes off they shut off as opposed to like a gasoline powered one it just keeps running so as far as the safety feature goes it's great because as soon as my hand comes off it just shuts down um, so we're gonna cut this grass basically about as low as I can go I already see a little bit of green growth in the bottom. The reason that you want to cut these in late winter before your new growth comes is because you don't want to cut the tips off of your new growth. Then they turn brown, which is not that big of a deal, but in the long run, of course, you want to have the prettiest foliage you possibly can. So I'm going to go as low as I can, hopefully just at one time and go across. Um, so that way my bungee cord ponytail works. smarter not harder my friends see 
Look at that. Look how easy that is, is to pick up that whole grass just like that. So much easier than not strapping it up. I'm going to come in here and clean up my edges and then I can get the rake and clean everything up for once. One down, two to go. Okay guys, so those three perennial grasses have been trimmed all the way back down to the ground and they have been cleaned up. I'm telling you that bungee cord method works beautifully well. I have cut many perennial grasses without using a cord or without tying it up and the cleanup is just so much more involved. So go get you a cheap bungee cord and use that when you do your perennial grasses. It makes life so much easier. All right, now life happens, things are, uh, duty calls and I cannot I don't have time to work on the main part of the bed as far as like the last little bit of the cleaning up and um, fertilizing today things have just some things have come up that I have to take care of so I do want to show you though that bed to give you an update and also I have a couple of questions um, that I want to ask you to get your help on so if you will stay tuned for just one second I have an update and I want to ask you for some help on two different plants. Behind me you will see the um, main flower bed here at the entrance to the nursery. I have got a ton of perennials in here but I also have of course some great shrubs and one tree that is left over. Um, and then the rest I have a nice big pocket to do my annuals in. So the question that I have for you involves this little tree right here behind me. This is a Fat Albert, and you can tell that Fat Albert uh, is looking a little thin. He's looking a little sparse. And so my question to you folks is, do you have a Fat Albert? Have you grown a Fat Albert? And what have you done to make him thrive? Because I really think that this is probably in the wrong location. At first, I was afraid that he was going to get too much sun and that's why I put him here but now I'm afraid that he's not getting enough sun it seems to be he's definitely kind of shrunk <laughs> and the longer he stays here the smaller he gets so my question is do you think that it would be smart for me to dig him up and move him to a sunnier location um, I don't think it would be I don't think his root system is too massive for us to dig up of course we have the equipment um, I do have perennials around it though so Give me some help with your fat Alberts because I do have some concern about mine. Um, with this bed, um, in here I want to give you an update because I do have tons of perennials. Um, here we have, this is a lady in red fern and you can just start to see right here where she's starting to wake up. Um, there are four of these I believe in here um, and they are waking up it is super exciting 
So I have hostas in here as well, and you probably, <laughs> like, Jimmy, there's no hosta there. Well, see these little, there's these three sticks. There's one, two, three. This is where the hosta is. So we're gonna do a little investigating. Remember, of course, hostas are deciduous. They will go dormant in the winter. As soon as a freeze hits, it goes dormant. You lose all your foliage. It dies completely back. And then come warm temperatures, they come back. So I don't have any little sprouts yet, but I can see there's a green root up top. So because this bed is probably one of the coolest beds, doesn't get a lot of hot sun, they're still asleep. So I will just continue to wait on them to wake up. Even my little daffodils, they look kind of sparse right now too because it just doesn't get hot enough in this bed at this time of year to wake them up. Now, my question for you, sweet folks, number two, is these Mahonia. So let's go talk about these Mahonia. Here I have three Mahonias. I've got one, two, and then three right here. And they just look kind of spindly and sad. Mahonias are great evergreen shrubs that are predominantly for the shade. Um, this is my first time growing them in the landscape. They've been here for, this will be the second or third season. And they've just gotten tall and gangly. So I was doing a little research on Professor Google and Professor Google says that you can cut them back pretty severely and that that will help bush them out. Um, if I had had more time today, I was just going to bite the bullet and I was just going to go ahead and prune them pretty sharply. Um, but since I have run out of time, I thought maybe I'd ask you. So do you have Mahonia in your garden? If so, how do you prune it? Do you prune it? Everything's said to prune it about this time of the year. Coming out of winter, going into spring, because again, active growth is getting ready to start, just like my sunshine ligustrums. Um, but if you have Mahonia in your yard and you have pruned it, please share your wisdom with me so that way I can attack these three so they get nice and full and thick again and look beautiful. But for today, we are gonna sign off so I can go take care of some business. Y'all have a fantastic day. As always, thank you so much for guarding the Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.